Hey guys, it's Rachel Castile and welcome to Typology Corner. Today I'm doing an overview video on the ISTP personality type and I'm going to do it from the perspective of objective personality. So I'm going to cover the standard type and the jumper type. And uh, just to briefly show you what that looks like, here's our standard type and their functions and the jumper type. Um, so the ISTP is leading with TI, introverted thinking, extroverted sensing, introverted intuition, extroverted feeling. In the standard type, the TI and the SE is the savior functions, which follows standard Myers-Briggs sort of thinking. Um, but also there are types who jump their secondary process and are relying on their intuition way more heavily as a savior. And, uh, you get this jumper version who, um, is more reliant on an introverted space, uh, when making decisions and their observations. So the main decider is TI, SE, and then TI, NI in our jumper version. So the ISTP, just starting out, they are a decider type. Um, they are leading with an introverted decision-making process, which makes them attuned to the uh, human need of identity most. Being in touch with the self, knowing the self, knowing what is true for them um, is like of the utmost importance to them, is understanding their ways of doing things themselves. Um, yeah, what what is truly meaningful to them above all else is what feels most natural for them to go over that, to uh, come to a, a conclusion, being decisive on things. It's like a static function of knowing um, their own personal beliefs and truths and understandings of things. Um, yeah, that it's it's like a Jenga tower of understandings that all kind of layer together of life formulas, life understandings, um, that is the primary thing for them. Um, what else can I say about TI being in a dominant position? See, I, I'm an ESTP, so I do relate to this type a lot. Um, but a TI person is spending their time building what is true for them, their own personal truth, their independent thinkers. It's an analytical process that operates away from everybody else. Um, they are kind of mulling over things themselves and um, building an independent understanding of all things. Um, there is a need to analyze what they've gone through. Um, assimilate it, make sense of things. It's what makes sense to the self. And, um, yeah, they're guided by their own truths, their own understanding. So they're, they're going to want to always have that freedom to think independently, to, um, be guided by their own conclusions and, um, yeah, to, to build something that, um, requires like skill in a sense of developing their own skill sets, becoming better at whatever it is that they've put their, uh, energy towards. Um, yeah. So they, they really want to know the self primarily like, Hey, this is what I believe. I don't believe that. Um, where do I fall on whatever issue is being brought up? Like, um, things need to make sense to them and they will aim to process things and come to a decisive conclusion, um, ahead of everything else. So this function is married with, um, extroverted sensing, introverted intuition, and extroverted feeling. So, um, combining that with extroverted sensing, uh, as a secondary process in our standard type, you get a person who is uh, in the moment, kind of hands-on with things and making sense of physical things. Um, this this brain is kind of a mechanic sort of mind, having an internal model of uh, 
the outside world. It's building models. So like understanding how a system works, how, um, you know, I'll use the engine example, how an engine, uh, all the parts work together and then physically going out and, uh, working on an engine and, you know, approaching it based on the internal model that they have of the said engine. And, uh, they're really good at that technical kind of hands-on things, um, that stem from their understanding of what they're doing. So that could be applied to all kinds of things. It could be accounting. It could be, um, just how to, how to run a family. Like they, a TI person would have a go-to system, a go-to way of approaching things based on their own personal understandings of things, what conclusions they've made, um, on sifting through what is the best way to approach this thing. What is the way that's going to work for me, um, in doing said job in playing this role and then them executing that through the extroverted sensing, um, extroverted sensing is a gathering function, um, of the five senses in the now it's very present moment sort of thing. So they, they will have a certain activity about them and being out there and doing things. They might enjoy being in nature, Um, but this process is still serving the, the independent thinking. So they might get attached to certain brands that they like certain products because it adheres to certain, uh, beliefs that they have, or they feel, um, what's that word? They feel an affinity towards certain, uh, products because of the processes used to create it or something like, um, I'll take an example, like Vibram five finger shoes, like I uh, seeing the reasons for how it's better for your health, for your feet, for, um, the muscles in your calves and how they, you know, it's better to be more, um, accustomed to barefoot running as opposed to something that, uh, is less natural, you know, like that sort of, I could come to a conclusion that all those things are good. And I want to find a shoe that is in adherence to those TI preferences that I have. Um, and then that kind of leads me to the product that fits all of those criteria that matter to me. That is my personal reasons as an example, you know, um, it could be veganism. It could be, you know, um, the certain beliefs I have about health, that led me down a path to choosing a certain way of life and then living that out. Um, TI is the decisions made that are internal. Um, my own criteria, my own reasonings, the things that it's like, Hey, the independent thinking led me to then walking this out and living in this certain way. It could be, I choose to homeschool my kids over, um, public school for these certain reasons. And then I walk it out. I live it out. Um, that's an example of being in touch with the identity, having come to a conclusion for the self, not looking at the spectrum of society and what, um, other people decided to do or what's popular. TI is going to find its own way and then live from it and live it out. Um, yeah. So, um, SE in the ISTP is, um, like engaging the body in now things It can like just physical activities They can like working out. Um, and again, just still thinking through that, that individualistic thinking of like their own approach to working out their own, um, uh, workout system or whatever. Um, a lot of ISTPs are actually fighters. Uh, a lot of, uh, MMA fighters or ISTPs, people in the Navy and the army, um, can really enjoy, being a part of a specific way of, um, thinking or how do I put it? It's that mastery of skill of that TI kind of building an understanding of how to do something and then executing it with the extroverted sensing in the now, um, sort of combo. You can see them, um, becoming like the masters of whatever they set out to do. Um, mastering a physical skill set is something 
you can see um, comes very naturally to them. They could be pilots. They could be, you know, just really um, high level of skill sort of things is attractive to to ISTPs that the TI with that physical element. Um, yeah, so that's looking at the strengths of like our standard type is that that TI and that SE working together. And um, then that NI is kind of the seeing of patterns. Um, I'll go back to the image just to kind of help you see what I'm describing here. So now I'm looking at this as a demon uh, process. So this SE has a reliance on the five senses, the in the now, the gathering of new information. Um, trusting the facts as they are and um, making sense of that and then letting a pattern emerge from the gathering that will kind of naturally happen from gathering and um, the ISTP they are a dominant decider type so they have the gift of double observation here in the middle whichever one's a savior or a demon determines if it's a standard or jumper type, but this is kind of a balance that they can organize the patterns and see the, you know, see the patterns in the information, but also are gathering and seeing both sides of it. They don't have a missing information, huge, uh, life freakouts that observer dominant types can find themselves in. Um, but so NI in a demon third position for the standard type, um, is just not as much of a trust in the pattern alone in uh, kind of the intuitive knowings that kind of pop up in them. The NI is like kind of future oriented, seeing where things are going, what's going on behind the scenes, what's the meaning of what they're seeing in front of them. Um, the standard type has more of a reliance on, no, oh, just tell me the facts. This needs to make sense. All the facts need to line up um, and not trusting the pattern straight off. It's like it has to be broken down with very factual, concrete information. Um, and if that supports the kind of intuitive knowing or pattern about something, then it's like, okay. But um, your ISTP isn't super guided by the intuitive kind of knowing about where things are headed. Um, they are inclined to prove it with more facts in order to kind of trust it is sort of how that manifests. And um, down to the extroverted feeling, which is uh, the ISTP's um, inferior process. It's the thing that they put the least amount of time into. Um, extroverted feeling is a tribe oriented function of being aware of the spectrum of other people, of, um, what other people are valuing. Um, they, they put their time in on building their own structure and they're not inclined to check in to see what the tribe has to say about it. Um, they live more true to their own identity and, uh, the void in their life is actually being in touch with other people and seeing, um, I guess getting that feedback in their life to see if what they're building is even valuable for the people around them. Um, they can kind of struggle with isolation from the tribe, maybe unknowingly. And, um, the shock of their life can be hearing from the tribe that what they've been doing isn't valuable to the people around them. And that can be very like a painful experience for that to happen to them. Um, a, a growth point for them is actually expressing themselves to the tribe more, getting feedback from the tribe, sharing their emotions with the tribe. Um, I've said this in other videos that FE types really benefit from expressing their emotions in general to other people. It's very like therapeutic for them to um, really communicate. Uh, their emotional world needs to be spoken out loud. FE is an expressive function. So yeah, the more that they can express and get feedback both and kind of be more involved in community and not purely just, hey, here's the amazing, you know, my belief system, my my own thinking. I just want to export my thinking into a book and I want it to sell. But 
kind of the book selling has to do with networking, has to do with being in touch with other people, seeing what matters to the people around you to see if the tribe would even want to buy or find value in um, what the ISTP has spent their time building apart from people in their own sort of space. Um, the comfort zone of the ISTP is living true to self and defining self more and more and more. And, um, yeah, they can be kind of doing their own thing. Um, and, um, yeah, getting in touch with the people around them is very, very beneficial. Um, the more you can, uh, find a way to still bring people alongside what you're doing all of the time and to stay plugged into people and to keep the voice of others coming into your life, the healthier you'll be, the more happy you'll be, or less likely to have a big life tidal wave of out of nowhere tribe feedback, just shocking you because, you know, you just weren't aware of everyone else around you sort of uh, thing. This is a common um, life um, growth path for the IP types, all four of them, the ISTP, the INTP, the ISFP, and the INFP. All are very individualistic and independent in that way. Um, they want to stay true to self most and um, don't want to be, um, how do I say, they don't want to lose self at the expense of the collective. So they, they major on self-defining and self-preservation in a sense of um, letting, staying true to self, I think is the best way to describe that in the midst of all things that they do. And I, I think that is a very awesome gift to be aware of self and to stay true to self. It's just the encouragement is to dialogue and allow people to, uh, I guess, be factored in along your, in your journey and, uh, to keep that conversation so you don't lose touch with the world around you. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of the standard type back onto, um, looking at what does it look like to be a jumper type? Um, so our ISTP that is more NI related or re let me reword that is more relying on NI as a savior. Um, you get a person who kind of has a deeper trust in the pattern that is arising in them. And they're more internal, they're more like trusting of their inner world. And um, they're not as uh, proving, I guess, proving with the facts. They are, um, the pattern just is more apparent to them and, uh, they'll make decisions that incorporates that they'll be more trusting of that behind the scene information that's going on. Um, more trusting of, uh, a particular future path that they can see emerging in the information. Um, they will be guided more by, by like this intuitive abstract understanding of things like this knowing inside of them and um yeah that they they will walk in such a way that they're more grounded in the organized patterns that they've seen and allowing that to inform their decisions their life direction and um they're not they're not gathering as much they're not needing to take in lots of new information, uh, in order to make decisions. They are, how do I describe this? They are just, they're more dependent on that pattern. Uh, if you push them on, you know, what matters to them, it's a particular future. It's a particular path and it's, it's walking down it. It's, staying true to it, not diverting from it. Um, I think my dad might be this type, the jumper ISTP being more in tune with, um, 
the organized patterns that they've built inside of themselves and not branching out and gathering new information, uh, not trusting the, the new information to be um, trustworthy, I guess, as much when, when seeing the, the internal knowings um, from life, from experiences, whatever conclusions um, your jumper would have come to, they are more locked onto that staying true to it. It has more of a J like, um, uh, sort of what word is that? This is more of a J type. It'll be kind of like the ISTJ in a sense where, uh, there's internal organized information that is guiding the life. It's guiding the choices that this person makes. Um, it's causing them to limit new things coming in, um, because they're ordering their life based on internal information criteria, internal patterns. And, um, yeah, what's most important to them is staying true to that, living it out, walking it out, that worldview, you can almost call it that, that the NI is like the worldview. It's the world understanding that he, that I say he, um, but I was somewhat thinking about my dad being possibly this type, but, um, a person who has that internal structure of their own understanding, their own logic, their own, you know, that TI and the NI working together and those being saviors, that's the most defined part about a person and living true to it, exporting that, sharing that. Um, but first and foremost, them being very identity first, it's they to stay true to um, their own inner world primarily. Um, so yeah, this type will have more of a, um, uh, almost want to call it blast, but it's not blast. It's, um, there's more sleep processing going on and, um, there's more of a guarding this, that this is what is king is the inner understanding, the inner logic, the inner reasons, and kind of plowing through the tribe with that, um, that is well-defined and not gathering. And, um, the tribe is being missed a bit. Um, just that's a commonality for the ISTP, the tribe being the thing that's not being checked in with as much. And then the, um, the, uh, gathering component is not as strong. So, um, just comparing the two, um, our regular or standard ISTP who has savior SE will be more open, will be more taken in new information regularly. Um, will want, will have more of that thirst for new experiences, something different that's not known, um, less habitual, um, they still will be individualistic in their own thinking, but still will be more kind of outdoorsy, more wanting to, um, engage the five senses, um, experience new things hear new ways of, um, thinking about something. Um, yeah, it will be intriguing to encounter new sensory things, new books, new information, new experiences, going to new places is still an element that could be really enjoyed. Um, because that's still the primary function, uh, how the ICP actually engages with the world around them is going to that extroverted sensing process. Um, yeah. So, um, again, kind of final thoughts, um, FE for both types is the path to growth, um, to kind of become a little less tethered or addicted to overly defining and defining the defining and refining the TI process and thinking that the answer is always in, I just need to go and work out the identity more. Um, the true growth for them is to go out to the tribe, to the community and, um, incorporate the community in their life more and to not allow the introverted thinking to isolate them. Um, and, uh, 
kind of, it's that journey of significance. That's something I haven't mentioned yet that, uh, identity dominant people, the, the main human need is significance, knowing their own significance and place in the tribe, kind of, uh, wanting to be the best, wanting to be acknowledged to be significant to others. Like, um, they're spending that much time on defining the identity and they want to know that, you know, that they're acknowledged in the spectrum of the tribe as something significant. And, um, in order to really somewhat, uh, see the truth of that and not just kind of be living in the ego of like, I am that I am the best in the tribe. I am, um, valuable in that sense to really see that you have to allow society to tell you that and not just live in your head about whatever criteria you feel like you're really doing good at and that you're measuring, um, what makes you significant and majoring on those things more and more, um, to actually let the tribe truthfully speak to you and let you know where you are falling in the tribe. If you really are of value to them in the, in the way that you're living your life, um, it's, um, uh, it can be a bit scary. The, the fear I would say is tribe pain that ICPs have, um, and how to not have that be so daunting is to let that be something, um, that's spoken into your life often. And then you're able to adjust and see and kind of see outside of yourself, um, because it doesn't come natural. That is the big imbalance. Um, T I B N top, then F E is like not acknowledged. And, um, the more you can bring people along with you throughout your life and not go through phases of checking in and phases of not at all, the more, um, that becomes something not as scary to you. Um, because, um, you might not feel that you see it naturally. So you have to go out and intentionally, um, find ways to see the tribe values, the tribe spectrum, to see what people are liking and disliking, seeing, um, whatever that is, if that's your family, if it's society, if it's, it depends on, you know, I think of it kind of like marketing in a sense, um, uh, the ICP becomes a very defined product. But uh, does the market value what you're building? And just getting that whole spectrum of keeping the market's voice in your life is really beneficial for the ISTP. Um, so growth for the uh, standard type is to trust their intuitions more, to, um, to kind of put more time in the organizing of the patterns, getting that understanding of all of the things that they're walking through and, um, to be able to kind of extract that and let it guide their life too, that they're not just kind of jumping all over the place a bit, but allowing, you know, time to organize, um, understandings about all of the things that they walk through and it'll help them kind of find true North, help them narrow down on, um, a more particular path in a sense, um, and just seeing both sides of that coin uh, or spending more time on, uh, the intuitive side of, um, how do I describe that kind of to just allow the, the pattern to guide them to, and to become more trusting of it. Um, that, you know, that information is incorporated as well. And then for our jumper type, um, it would be beneficial for them to go out there and get new information and, um, to experience new things, to go and do something that they, uh, that isn't in their kind of go-to life patterns already. And to just kind of branch out with new experiences, new information, and that will update the patterns that they're used to living by the understandings that they already have, the kind of knowings, the worldview that they have, um, the more they can allow themselves to be exposed to different, um, 
narratives or experiences um, will be beneficial for a person who is guided by the underlying pattern and understanding of, of life and the things that is somewhat shaping the future that they choose to engage in. So the more experiences they have, the more that as they organize, um, yeah, the organization just becomes more informed. So it's both sides of the information. Um, and for both types, again, be intentional to spend time with other people and allow them to speak into your life. Allow them to tell you, to give you feedback on what you've been doing. Give them, you know, to give you feedback on your belief systems, your truths, your conclusions, your logic, your reasons. Um, hear from the tribe, allow them to speak to you. Um, this could be a place where you have a wall where you're a bit defensive, um, where you stay true in your independence. And just know you absolutely at the end of the, at the end of the day are still an individual who gets to analyze and come to your own conclusions. It's just um, the more you do this, it won't be so painful or scary when you get reviews, when you get uh, a comment under what you're doing. In a sense, um, you can process that. You're allowing that in your life more, and yeah. Um, You'll be a better person overall going forward in all the endeavors that you do and all the things you build, uh, you know, aim to build community alongside of what you're building. So yeah, guys, that is about it for the ISTP. I hope you got value out of this. If you did go and give me a thumbs up. I appreciate hearing that the video made an impact for you and, um, Subscribe for future content. Um, and if any of these cognitive functions are kind of fuzzy to you, you can head over to the channel and go to the cognitive function series. And um, I have a video on all of the eight functions, just going deeper into this. Um, yeah, just to help you get greater understanding of your type. Um, if you'd like help knowing your type, wanting to lock down which of the 16, the 32 types that you are, um, or just with like life coaching, um, according to your personality type or just coaching in general, you can head over to my website, typologycorner.com. The link is in the, the, uh, description below. And I'd love to chat with you to talk through all of these sorts of things. Um, so yeah, again, thank you for watching. Um, I, again, pray that this has been valuable to you. Um, insightful in some way or brought clarity to you. And um, yeah, uh, that's it for this video. I'll see y'all on the next one.